Uh, it's Robert Beatty. I'm going to talk again about scene sequel writing. I'm going to talk about something I have not yet discussed, but I'm going to review some that I have discussed. So if you've watched other videos, some of this will be a repeat. This is Writing Magazine Fiction by Walter S. Campbell. Also, Stanley Vestal. It's like uh, Mark Twain and Samuel Clemens. He was director of professional writing program at University of Oklahoma, OU. And this was published in 1940. He was teaching this in the 1930s. Writing magazine fiction. All right, I have had a difficult time handling books. I have arthritis and I have hand tremors. So I have taken some photos and I will uh, be pulling up those photos. Um, this is um, Swain's book. He was student and colleague of Walter S. Campbell. It was published in 1965. The foreword, which this is when he finished the book, 1964. It just took a while to get published back then. <clears throat> now I. Um, I probably should talk about uh, Jim Butcher. He admits being kind of a arrogant imbecile in uh, his class with Deborah Chester, a successor to Walter S. Campbell, Dwight Swain, Jack Bickham, Deborah Chester at OU. I was given a copy of Tricks and Techniques of the Selling Writer that Dwight Swain gave my aunt, who gave it to me, in the late 1960s. I didn't read it until after I graduated high school. I read it in probably June or July um, 1974, after I graduated high school. And then my... I traded it for some comic books. Then, 1970, summer of 1974. And why? Because I read that and I said, well, everybody knows that. And then I learned other kinds of writing, like legal writing. And I got so far away from basic um, fiction that when I read it, it took a while before it all kind of started coming back to me. Notice that about my memory. I don't know if everybody's memory is the same, but sometimes I remember things quickly. Sometimes I don't. So from Campbell's book, the complete formula for the scene may be stated as follows. Meeting, purpose, encounter, containing these possible elements, attempts. Now then, go to final action, win, lose, quit. Swain calls this disaster. Um, Campbell, his predecessor, is more flexible. Win, lose, quit. Doesn't have to be a disaster. You could win. That is actually probably more accurate. And then sequel. Well, what's contained in this sequel?
<clears throat> okay, this is the next page. That was page uh, 44. This is 45 in Writing Magazine Fiction, 1940. And uh, here Campbell is saying, Mastery of the scene is indispensable. Encounter a meaning, a purpose, and encounter final action and a sequel. The sequel or aftermath. The sequel has a different function from that of the other four parts of the scene. The first four parts of the scene serve to arouse interest. That is their principal function. And you must make the most of these parts. The sequel, Campbell asserts, exists primarily for the sake of plausibility. Each sequel, except the last, is a doorway to a new scene. A prize fighter who has been knocked out, carried to the dressing room, may feel blah blah. This is. Uh, the function of the sequel of the scene is to show the reaction, the reaction of the focal character. So this is what uh, Campbell's talking about in the 30s and 40s and into the 50s, um, which of course Swain adapts. Later, uh, this is a still in Campbell's book, <clears throat> Having failed to achieve his ultimate purpose, our hero in the sequel must resolve upon a new attempt. It is the sequels of the scenes that one learns what the state of affairs is, what the plight of the hero is. Successful plotting, therefore, depends perhaps, more upon the proper handling of sequels of scenes than upon any other things. Now, again, <clears throat> this was written, this was published in 1940. And Campbell writes, sooner or later, everyone who attempts a career as an author finds himself writing for the magazines. If successful in other fields, he will be invited to do so. If unsuccessful, he will be compelled to do so, unless he has independent means. This book is intended to aid the aspiring writer to attain his goal. <clears throat> the magazine writer Obtain certain solid advantages denied to the author of books. Again, this is 1940, written in the 1930s. The magazine writer reaches a far larger public than the author of books. He, uh, <clears throat> he undergoes a sterner discipline as an artist, and he makes more money. The magazine offers a tempting field to the writer in search of fame, for only rarely does a book find as many readers as a magazine of national circulation. Now this was all true when this was being written. Years ago, decades ago, almost a century ago. Um, you wanted to make money as an author, as a writer, you wrote for magazines. Later, again, the magazine writer is compelled to bring all his work up to a high technical level, level. <clears throat> since editors dare not publish anything that falls much below their standards. If they do, they lose their readers and their job. A novelist may fumble and dwaddle 
uh, muff his chances in a book since his publisher can wait if necessary for the third book to make up the deficit on the first two. The magazine writer is rarely permitted to publish half-baked work. He must be clear, adept, and know where he's going. Irrelevancies and experiments that do not come off are not among his privileges. Craft demands exactness, compression, polish, and versatility. Other things being equal, he generally proves to be a better technician than his brother who writes book. And then the magazine writer makes more money as a rule. That was a fact in the 1930s when these books were conceived or written. Now, let's look at the overleaf here, book jacket. In a real sense, this manual, that is, Tricks and Techniques of the Selling Writer, Dwight V. Swain. In a real sense, this manual is the nat natural successor to writing magazine fiction, the book I've been showing you. And then a 10 years later, 1950 book, Writing Advice and Devices, also by Campbell. Since Dwight V. Swain studied and worked with W.S. Campbell, author of those two classics in the field of fiction writing. Again, when Swain wrote this, he was also writing primarily for the magazine writer, just like Campbell was. But can't, the magazine writer, today it's, you know, completely different. So here's chapter one, the first part. You only need to know four things in order to write a solid story. How to group words into motivation reaction units. How to group motivation reaction units into scenes and sequels. Then you write story pattern and characters. I want to emphasize what my next video, what I intend my next video to be is about writing motivation reaction units um, for scenes and sequels. That's how you write scenes and sequels with motivation reaction units. Page 56, <clears throat> Swain, terms of constructing a motiv motivation reaction unit, that order is this, motivating stimulus, A. B, character reaction, feeling, action, speech, in that order. Now, <clears throat> two things. A stimulus and a character reaction. Whichever character you're focusing on at the time, you share their internal feelings any physical, visible action they have, or internal action. They have a heart attack, they have pain. And then speech, anything they say, exclaim. And just keep doing that. Outline the whole book that way and write it that way. So, uh, next video, uh, what my intention is, there's a lot going on in my life and family right now, um, but I'll get back to this.